thank you so much for joining us on our Mamas in Progress podcast, episode number six. We are your hosts, Cecily Rose. And I am Shelby Renee. And we are two moms living in Los Angeles, trying to figure things out one day at a time. Ain't no hood like mama hood. Facts. Hashtag <laughs> facts. <laughs> yes, hashtag facts. So today we are excited because we are going to be talking about moms getting involved in the political process. What does it mean to get involved in the political process on the local level, on a national level? I am so excited to have Sylvia Brooks with me today, who is going to talk to us about that topic. Um, from food insecurity to homelessness to the growing crisis pandemic, um, there's a lot of issues that are at stake and that affect moms. So I feel like this is a very timely topic because whether you want to be in politics or not, it affects your daily life. But before we get started, I just wanted to um, introduce our guest, Sylvia. She is a mom, of course, a mom of two. She was born and raised on the East Coast but has lived in Los Angeles for over 25 years. She's a product of public school education, a first generation college graduate and a true believer in community service. She is running for seat three on the LACCD Board of Trustees to advocate for the underrepresented, underrepresented members of the LACCD community. This includes women, students and faculty of color, members of the LGBTQ plus community and those with disabilities. Thank you so much for being with us, Sylvia. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Yes. Well, this is a timely topic. Um, Shelby, do you want to go ahead and jump in? Because I've been talking a lot. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. I, I love that intro. I'm, just, I'm fired up. I'm my ears are open. Look, my listening ears are, are on, as my daughter, would, my five-year-old would say. And I am just ready to soak up all that you're going to hear with us. I mean, we know that Black women have played an instrumental role in just the democratic and voting process for years, you know, since, since we were able to, whether it was voter registration, being poll workers, campaigning. Uh, but, you know, for a long time, it was like we weren't getting our just due in terms of being holding offices and becoming elected officials. And now the tides are changing. We're seeing people like Keisha Lance Bottoms, my Spelman sister and Link sister, who's the mayor of Atlanta. We have London Breed in San Francisco. We have the sister in Rochester, uh, Stacey Abrams, and the list goes on and on. So it's like, even with all the social injustice that's going on in 2020, it's so encouraging to see Black women and Black moms stepping into the forefront and assuming um, elected positions. So. I just commend you for what you're doing. And I, my first question is just, you know, what made you come to this decision to, uh, to run and why this particular seat? Okay, so um, I have always felt called to public service, mm -hmm. to some form, some shape of public service. Um, and in today's climate, in our political climate today, I, I feel compelled. I'm like, I have to do something different. So I started just by looking online, trying to find out what what local offices are um, available, what local offices are up for um, election. And I started there just like because I know I wanted to do something. Um, and then I found all these amazing organizations that are encouraging women to run um, on the national level, on the local level, on the, on the city council level, just, just in all the levels, which is really super important. And I um, came across this opportunity, Los Angeles Community College District, um, on Facebook in another group um, of, of moms. And, and they, they were talking about this particular um, office being one that impacts students directly. And we need voices to advocate for and to support those students in this particular office, and I thought, that's me. I thought this is the this is the call I was hearing. I didn't really know what it was yet, but this is the one um, that that landed in my lap. So I started doing research and I started looking into what is LACCD, um, how does it work, and how and how can we advocate and support students in it. That was my first my first thought. So you know, I started with the research part, right? That's where we always start with everything. And 
I came across the mission statement and the vision for LACCD, and it is centered in student success. The mission statement and the vision statement both put students as the most important stakeholder in this community college district. Um, there are nine colleges in the district. They, they run all the way across Los Angeles County. Um, they serve over 250,000 students. Wow, that's a lot. Um, yeah. the, it is, it's huge. Um, the board, which is comprised of seven members, um, oversees a budget that is over $5 billion. Um, and even though the mission is centered in student success, students are only successfully completing their programs at about 40%. We wow. can do better than that. And as a parent, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I know we can do better than that. I know if we support our students, we can do better. And here I am. Here I am getting ready, getting, get, I'm on the campaign trail. So I'm, and I'm on the ballot and I'm, I'm ready to get to work. That's pretty much where it is. That's so amazing that you found out about the opportunity on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But what's mm -hmm. even more amazing is that you are running along with other moms, yes. three other moms of color. Did you all know each other before or did you all meet on the Facebook page? Like, how did that work? And then how did you all decide to kind of like create a, a website together? So the interesting thing is we didn't know each other um, at the start of this. We met through this process. And there's another woman who, um, who's an ally who wanted to amplify the voices of Black women. She wanted to amplify um, our reach. And she's the one who actually brought us together and said, hey, would you guys consider running together? Would you guys consider collectively putting your resources together and collectively putting your ideas together and collectively putting your energy together um, to do something different? Because LACCD is a, it's a local election. So that means, you know, you're gonna flip like six, seven, eight, nine pages before you get to this particular office. Um, so a lot of people don't know about it. And a lot of people don't know, um, um, you know, you get to that part of the, the ballot and you just start checking, oh, this name looks nice. But we wanted mm -hmm. to change that. We want people to really be engaged in every office, including the local ones. So when we work collectively, we can, we can amplify our voices and be heard in a better way. So, so one person, brought us together and, and we gelled and bond and we know that our, our vision is similar so we could build together. And for those of um, the folks that are listening, what is the name of your website? Just before I ask my next question, because I know if they're listening, they might want to hop on right quick. It is justiceforlaccd.com. Justiceforlaccd.com. And we'll make sure to put that in the show notes too. Yes, so, yes, 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 absolutely. So I, on, I would love to just introduce my, my running mates real quick. They're not here, but I just want oh, to tell yes, you their yes. names also. Yes, so, please do. So just a little of logistics, just a little bit of logistics. There are seven seats open on the, um, well, there are seven members to the Board of Trustees for LACCD. Um, they have elections every two years and they elect odd number seats and then even number seats. So this year they're electing the odd number seats, seats one, three, five and seven. So those are the, the four seats that'll be on the ballot. Sharnay Tunston is one of the women I'm running with. She's running for seat one. Sylvia Brooks Griffin, me. I'm running for seat three. Dr. Nishe James Gray is running for seat five. And then our final member is Raquel Watts and she's running for seat seven. So there are four open seats this year and we're all, we're all going for it this year. Two years from now, the even number seats will be open and we have another opportunity to make some big change too. So everyone, and this is probably ignorant, a question, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it. I'm going to be <laughs> that girl. Everyone in the County of Los Angeles will be able to vote for this for LACCD. Yes. And that okay. is not an ignorant question at all. That's okay. a super important question because, because you do, you have, you have the national election, which will be the first couple pages of the ballot. You have um, the house of representatives and the, and well, you have the president, you have the House, you have the Senate, and then we come to state races. So then you have all the state um, House and state Senate that's on the ballot. And then you have all the ballot measures statewide that are on the ballot. And then you have all the county 
measures that are on the ballot and the county offices that are on the ballot. And this race, LACCD, Los Angeles Community College District, is on the LA County part of the ballot. So if you live in LA County, anywhere in LA County, then we'll be on your ballot and you can vote for us on November 3rd. Well, I'm so glad we're doing this because listen, I've been one of those moms who's like, okay, let me see whose name sounds good at this point. Because <laughs> I know, you know, it's from real. a national level and on the state level, but I've got to be 1000% honest. There are times on the local level where I'm like, I'm just going to vote for a woman. Okay, that's a woman. Or I'm going to vote for this person because they sound like they have a nice name. And that's just ignorant. That's just bad. But, but bad. The, the, the catch is that is it's real also and and that's one of the things that we hope we can begin to change right if we if we can engage all the voters and let them know hey this is a an office that is important and and we want you to look at it we want you to pay attention we want you to look at the candidates who are being put in front of you and, and make a great decision um based on the information that you have so just in addition to running for office it's kind of a bit of a um all of us getting more involved in the civics of of our community, right? Getting involved in just being a part of what's happening locally and not only a part of what's happening nationally. Because what happens right here trickles up. Absolutely. And I think, and we've heard a lot of that just since 2016. I think people have become more cognizant and more mindful of that these local elections are so important. And in some respects, even more important because it's your local community that is affecting you day to day. So I love that you shared that. And like Cecily said, I mean, we're all educated because I'm, I'm guilty too. And so I've just now started to really, you know, with the primaries that happened in 2018, where I started to, or the elections that happened in 2018, where I really started to be more engaged and fully understand the local elections, because I was the same way, any, meeny, miny, mo. So I'm so glad that we're realizing that, yes, these national uh, positions make a lot of difference, but these local elections are how we can really start to affect change, especially as moms. And to that point, I mean, I love that you you answered the call. So not only did you see it on Facebook, but you acted. So what would you say to other moms who are kind of thinking about, you know, dipping their toe into politics or getting involved in their local elections? What advice would you give to them? Do it. That would be my, that would be the, the, the first and the biggest piece of advice I have. Do it. Don't question whether or not you should do it because, because ultimately there are resources and supports available for you. So if you make that commitment, those resources are going to show up. There are organizations that are going to show up that are going to support you. That's the first step. Two, just as a parent, we we're the first example for our children right? And if we feel called to do something, we feel called to act, our kids are watching, right? And we want to be able to set the example for them that this is scary. I've never done this before, but I can be courageous and do it anyway. So, so my advice would, would be do it. And win or lose, you've engaged. You've engaged in the civic process and that by itself is so important. And it's super important for your kids to see you engage in the civic process. So do it. Well, this is a no brainer for me because even before I knew that you were running for office, you've always been someone who has, is organizing something or who is engaging their children. And just for those who are listening, Sylvia on a weekly basis, um, well, we can't now because of the coronavirus, but before all of that, she was weekly feeding people in her community in the North Hollywood area, weekly, okay? I would dip in and dip out, but you sustained and you were there. And then on top of that, um, after George, George Floyd's um, passing, you decided to organize a demonstration with children and I honestly was on the fence back and forth because I was like, should I go? Should I not go? But it was my son who was like, no, mom, we need to be out there. We need to make our voices heard. So first, I would just want to say thank you for having that idea to have a children's demonstration. And um, the second, the real question is, why did you want to have that demonstration? Because obviously, whether you're running for office or not, you're the type of person that is engaged in your community and you're, you've been making a difference 
with a title or not. So I know that that's just something that you're going to continue to do. But what inspired you to do the Children's March? Oh, boy. Uh, that was early June, right? And it was yes. directly after George Floyd was murdered. And I, and I really want to make sure that we, we not sugarcoat stuff, right? Mm -hmm. He was murdered. He was, um, yes. And, and um, okay. my children, my whole house was, was heartbroken because um, it felt like we can't be, like just being black is a problem. And it breaks my heart that my kids in 2020 have to experience that. So I came to the idea of doing the march and making it kid friendly because I wanted my kids to have a voice. I wanted my kids to feel like they could do something. And to be perfectly honest with you, I had so many friends who were concerned, just like you. Is it going to be okay? Is it going to be safe? Because it was right, right after George Floyd was killed, and there had already been some protests, and there had already been some violence, and there had already already been agitators in, yes. in um, different in different areas. Um, so a lot of people were worried, and so was I. I was scared too. I thought that I was going to be standing on the corner with me and my two kids and my husband, and that was going to be it. I thought it was just going to be us. We were in Sherman Oaks. I wasn't expecting a lot of people to come out and support. I actually prepared for the worst. I prepared my kids. I said, listen, some people may drive by and they may say nasty things. There may, there may be some people who are going to drive by and they're going to, they might throw something at us. It, it, it may be ugly. And that is, that is how I prepared my kids for this. And when we got out there in the street, the best of us showed up. Yeah. The absolute best of us showed up. I'm, I'm emotional now because there were so many people. We, we had, I mean, it was a crowd. There were people on every single corner. There, there were was. people of every shade, of every ethnicity, of every, um, uh, well, all, we're all living in the Valley, so we're all from here, <laughs> but just different economic backgrounds. Every, everybody showed up and everybody said, Black Lives Matter. Everybody on every single corner. And that is the final thing that inspired me to run, mm. to not just think about running, to not just hear the call, but to really step up and answer it because the best of us showed up. And if the best of us can show up when I'm feeling my, my most hopeless, because I was feeling really hopeless. When, if the best of us can show up at that moment, then I can be the best me and show up to. Wow. That's good. <laughs> yes. I'm getting teary. I'm sorry. I know. I'm like, I just got chills listening to it because you're so absolutely right. Like, you're absolutely right. Shelby, take it away because, you know, I'll start stuttering once I get all emotional. No, I thought that was great. I just want you to share more about what we can do to support you and help raise the voice because November 3rd is approaching. So what can we do? How can we best support you? Anyone who's listening, how can they best support you as well as the full slate? Okay. I want to I wanna first make sure that we, that, that you know what we're aiming to do, what our goal is. 40% um, of the students, about 40% of the students across the nine community colleges finish their programs. That means either they, they finish their academic program and they transfer to a four-year school, or they finish their two-year program, or they finish their certificate program in, in a trade. 40% is not a lot. We can do better than that. But the reason why it's so low, the reason why it's at 40% is because these students are struggling with so many other things. There's food insecurity. There's, there's probably about 60% of the students don't know where their next meal is coming from. Mm. Almost 50% wow. of the students suffer from housing insecurity. That means they're not living in one particular place. They might be living here today and then sleeping in a friend's house tomorrow, or maybe sleeping in their car. Almost 20% of the students, almost 20% are homeless. How do you learn? How do you succeed when you're facing these kind of these kinds of challenges, mm -hmm. right? So our goal is to get in here on this board and bring the focus back to those students first. Advocate for those students. Put in place additional programs because there are some programs there. Put in place additional supports and additional programs that are going to support them through these food insecurities. We're talking about increasing the food pantries across the nine kids. Mm -hmm. We're talking about looking at different housing um, 
possibilities, low cost housing, possibly student housing for the campuses. Those are things that we wanna bring back to the forefront so that the students and what the students need to be successful, what the students need to meet the mission and the vision of LACCD, they get. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. And you can support us by coming to the website, justiceforlaccd.com. You can donate, which would help us um, amplify our voices so that we can be heard and be seen across all of Los Angeles County. Um, you can volunteer. We're always looking for volunteers to help us with phone banking or to help us with, with um, um, fundraising activities. We can't go out in the street and, and hand out flyers because of COVID, but we still need volunteers. We still need people to, to support in that way. And um, the other way, which is super, super helpful, is support us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Repost, like, share, help us spread the word, help us amplify our voices, help us get to be the people who can advocate for these students and put their interests and their futures first. So what are some of those social media handles that you um, are a part of? So if people want to support or repost, how can they find you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? It's all we try to make it as easy as possible justice for laccd.com at justice for laccd for facebook and instagram at justice for laccd <laughs> on twitter it's the same name in all those places you'll find the information for my personal website there also it's sbg for laccd.com you'll find all the the website information for the other ladies you'll you'll learn more about who we are um what we're passionate about how we feel we can help and support students um the first link is to the website and and that'll give you all the information you need to kind of plug in and and help the donation link is there on the website it's on the instagram it's on the facebook it's on the twitter and it's all justice for laccd okay Okay. We'll make sure that we share everything. Yes, please, we'll share please. on every platform that we have. So we are here for it. To it's, so, it. it's so powerful, this, this social um, network. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's not used for good, but this time it can be. Yes, yes. Well, we want to uh, wrap up with one last question. You know, we're mamas in progress. So the last and final question, first and foremost, thank you so much for doing this. And I learned a lot. Um, so thank you. But the last and final question is, how do you think being a mom of two is going to affect your uh, position or your your not only the campaign but when you get the position because we're claiming it in Jesus name amen you. that you already have the position <laughs> yes. so yes. how do you feel like being a mom is going to affect the decisions you make on the board so so I think as a parent um, I know I for me as a parent I wrap all children in my maternal love right so if 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 you become one of my children and I'm about to have 250,000 additional children. I'm wrapping you in the same maternal love that I wrap my two children in. My, my, what I want for you is what is the best for you. I want to, I want to help you um, succeed in the best ways for you, and I want to support you. My goal is not to do everything for you. So that's how I raise my kids. But I want to support you so that you can reach the goals that you want to reach. Um, and I think I'm bringing that with me. Um, when I joined the board of trustees for LACCD. I'm bringing that um, maternal perspective that what um, the love and the care and the support that I provide to my own children is the kind of love and care and support that I want to bring to to lifting up all of these other students. Yeah. I don't want to call them children because they're they're over 18. <laughs> right. but, but, they're, but they're in our hearts as, as younger people. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and you're guiding them and their your guidance will really help to, like you said, increase that 40% rate, right? right? right. But also, I just want to add, yeah, I, I just want to add that moms also just get things done. We get yes, things done. Yes. <laughs> and that's, and that's that. That's just, I thought that was understood. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being with us during this segment. We really appreciate it. We are so excited to support you and we hope that all of our listeners learn something today and um, they'll be galvanized to 
get more involved in the political process. So yes. thank you very much for being here today. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. That was great, Shelby. You're absolutely right. Mamas do get it done. We do everything. Uh, yeah, don't we? Don't we? So we can certainly handle an elected office, okay? That's, yes. that's, that's light work compared to what we do. <laughs> Yes, it's, and I'm so glad that more moms are getting involved in the political process, particularly moms of color, because everything affects us. We're the ones that are affected by all of these policies and laws that are taking into place. And not only are they affecting moms, they're affecting our children. So it's just good to see more moms from Kamala Harris all, all the way down getting more involved in the political um, process. Um, yes, so I learned a lot, and um, now that our guest is gone, I'm going to have my, I'm, this oh. is not water. It's not water. I'm just oh, <laughs> but we can do that too. Listen, because it's been a week. It's okay. been a week. So you get into it. <laughs> okay. I'll get into it. I'll get into it. So while you, um, while you drink, the only thing that I wanted to um, admit, I looked at New York times. I was looking at an article just to prepare for this um, podcast. And uh, one of the things that they talked about is a reason why they think a lot of moms don't get involved in the political process is two factors, time, and mm -hmm. they've got small kids. And I was shocked because I was like, okay, I can see the time, but it feels like kids should not be a hindrance in you being more so in the political process. And um, the statistic that I found was in 2018, 23.5 million working parents rely on school or childhood programs while they went to while they went to work. So if you don't have good child care, it's difficult for you to say, okay, now I want to designate some of my time being in the political process. So I thought that was a very um, interesting statistic. And Sylvia's two children are older, so she does not have to worry about breastfeeding and trying to sit on a board because in some of these boardrooms, you can't bring a breastfeeding baby right. because they're closed. You know, if your name is not on the board, they're like no other members or no other guests, which mm -hmm. I thought was an interesting way that they kind of push some um, moms out. That was interesting. Yeah. And, yeah and and to that point, you know, a lot of people, you know, have issues with Black Lives Matter and the, the manifesto, but part of the manifesto for Black Lives Matter is to call, is it calling for the village to support moms and provide childcare so that moms can be active and, and activists and, and, and engage in activism. And I believe being a part of the political process is, is a part of that. So I think we, that's something that we can all take from it, regardless of how you feel about Black Lives Matter. That's something that I think is really missing from the dialogue and missing from what we talk about when we're with our mommy groups and our mom friends is not am I going to just watch your kids so you can go, you know, get your nails done or engage in some self care, not saying that's not important, but I'll also watch your kids so you can get out there and campaign and do what you need to do to help bring about change for all of our children. Yes, absolutely. You talk about elevating the conversation or elevating those babysitting requests. That's real because I just think about like, this is a tangent, but you think about the civil rights movement. And even though the men get all the glory, like, you know, you get Martin Luther King and the, the speakers, but it was those women, honey, in the back. Okay, folding up those envelopes, cooking that chicken, singing them songs with, with their kids, walking up and down the street like they were the backbone of the civil rights movement. And maybe they don't get the credit that they deserve, but women all over have always been um, doing things behind the scenes just to kind of hold it. And it would be great if they had that support you know, how much more could they do if they knew that they could, they had babysitting and schooling taken care of. So that's a great uh, point. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention is I know that every year they always have a like title for a mom that uh, politicians are always wanting to conquer. Cause you know, women go out and they vote in large numbers, particularly black women. We are very loyal when it comes to voting and they'll have the soccer mom or the security mom. And now we're living in the age of the rage mom. And I just <laughs> think those are funny terms that politicians are like, okay, we got to get the moms. What's the mom feeling this, mm -hmm. this time, you know? So like during Bush, it was the soccer mom. And then right. um, with the other Bush, it was the security mom with uh, uh, September 11th. It was the tiger mom. 
Well, the Tiger Mom, I think that is um, Asian women who are very aggressive in the way that they parent their right. children. But that was the connected to, so you didn't have like someone directly targeting them in terms of uh, politicians. Right. So, um, so now we've got the, the rage mom who's just mad at everything. Right. But she's using her rage. She's channeling her rage. There was a really powerful article. I think it was in the New York Times that you and I both saw about how moms are using their rage from seeing all these injustices and, and using it as they're channeling that frustration into action and activism and like Sylvia, getting involved in local politics. But that being said, I think for me, the trigger is always hearing our current president talk about the suburban mom. And, you know, for me, that's just a trigger because it's just like, I, once again, we have this stereotype, like it's still 1952 mm -hmm. of what the suburban mom looks like. And so I always say it just, it, that's really, cause that has come up a lot so far in the, in the past couple of months. And I think it will continue to come up about why we keep playing to this, you know, this scared, naive suburban mom. And I feel like that's a, disc you're discrediting all moms who are suburban moms, including mm -hmm. us, because the suburban mom of 2020 does not look like the suburban mom of 1952. You're absolutely right. I mean, the same things that moms in, that he thinks that he's talking about, those are issues that are top of the mind for me as well. Like I'm right. just as concerned about those things. So you're absolutely right, uh, absolutely right. Well, let's hop into some um, tips because we always try to leave with some takeaways. And um, this has been a very interesting or interesting one. The first tip that I have is I am not, um, no, number one, I'm going to educate myself because I, I was embarrassed. And just hearing Sylvia talk about the process, yeah. half of it, I did not know. So I think the tip that I need to give myself is that I need to educate myself and make sure that when I vote on the ballot in November, that I'm not just looking at what's on the uh, mm -hmm. national and the state level. So that's just, let's just put start no, there. Start, look, here, let's be clear. We already know how we're voting on that. Yes. So let's, like, we don't need to do any more research or deep dive. on. And I'm not changing my mind. Right? There's no way. No way. And one thing that happened back in 2016 that some of my friends put together is that they did like calls leading up to the election where different people assigned um, different offices, like on the local level. And then we had yeah. like a call um, beforehand and people shared like, okay, guys, this is what proposition, because you know how like those propositions, again, as a real estate investor, I've been more dialed in because those propositions are huge. And how many people showed up to the grocery store and were like, what happened to the plastic bags in your respective states, right? Yeah. You we're paying attention to the proposition. You're just checking yes, no, this, that, and the other. And you really have to, like you said, be educated, but there's a way to build community around it. So I really enjoyed that what my friends did. And I haven't heard we're doing that again this time. Shelby, let's do that. Way. Yeah, it was a fun way. To, we could totally organize that. It was a fun way to do it. And then, because we ain't got time. Nobody has time. Right, <laughs> to do all got, of them. Right, right. So you split it up and then you make it fun. And then everybody kind of like gives. And no one's telling you how to vote. They just kind of explain to you, you know, they've done a deep dive into what that particular office or slate or um, proposition means okay so we got we just gave you all a mom's night in idea grab grab your champagne and your drink okay. get your mommy circles and go over those propositions in california listen the propositions are long and i see what you oh, mean it is they will affect your life here it is like for, I mean, I, and I'm sure across the country, it is so critical. Like there are so many things that are on that ballot this year that we have to, to your point, and it's so true. And don't beat yourself up. I'm, I'm guilty. I feel like unless you're in politics, you know, I, I'm certainly guilty of not being as dialed in as I should have been in the past. But now I, I get it a hundred percent. Like how, Im, how involved we need to be and how we need to educate ourselves. Okay, so yes, that is tip number one from me and Shelby. We're going to get educated. That's tip number one. The second thing that I wanted to say, and Sylvia did mention it, that there are so many resources that I didn't know about that will support moms who are deciding to run or get involved in the political process. And I just wanted to say some of them on air so that if you're kind of thinking about it, then these will be some places that you can go just to get the research. Or if your friend says, wow, I really want to get involved, you can say, well, check these 
these things out. And these resources, from what I understand, are actually really great. So the first one is called sheshouldrun.org. And another one is called emergeamerica.org. And that one is specifically for Democrats. But there are some organizations that no matter what your um, political affiliation is, you can check those out. And then the other one is, it has a list of all the resources. It's called iknowpolitics.org. So I just wanted to put that out there. And hopefully we can put those in the notes, maybe put some links so that if people want to um, check those out at a later date, they'll have them for them. But those are just three of the ones that I was able to find. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And the other good, great point that Sylvia mentioned that I don't want to, that I want to reiterate is allyship. She spoke about an ally that connected her with the other three women that she's running with on her slate. And we know that there's strength in numbers. And that's my tip is, I mean, looking at her example, like it's an intimidating process. Like we said, you know, if you are like us and haven't been involved in politics before, it can be overwhelming. But if you want to answer that call, there's strength in numbers. There's always strength in numbers. And don't discount the allies who are out there who will help you along your journey, who are affiliated with some of the organizations that you mentioned. So I think we just need to realize that we can't run the marathon alone. Yes, absolutely. And here's the thing, everyone is not cut out to be in a political seat. Mm -hmm. But guess what, that doesn't let you off the hook. There's still opportunities and ways for you to serve. Because I've always known Sylvia to be a servant of people before she decided to run. She's just had that. So if you're someone's like, well, I don't necessarily want for office, but I want to serve, there are organizations and resources for that. So I'm going to drop a couple of those off. There's momrising.com. There's momsdemandaction.org. There's color of change. And then there's mob, which is mothers of black boys. And then the last one is moms demand action. And that's just a few. So just a quick Google search, putting in mom organizations that are political. You can go on their website and easily see what their statements are, what their agendas are, and align yourself with those um, organizations for volunteering or whatever, whatever their need is. So you don't necessarily have to run for office. Can I add one more to the list? Uh, the Black Mama Alliance. That's another great one um, that I encourage people to research. One of my Spelman sisters is on the board there. And I'm still learning more and more about just that organization. But I believe it's based in Atlanta. But that's another great one to check out. And to piggyback off of your point, I feel like, you know, even if you're not called to be the person who's running, like we said, you know, we as moms and Black women, we've had a long history and tradition of being, like you said, the backbone, right, of the process. So we know we're dealing with voter suppression. Yes. Stacey Abrams has an amazing organization. See how you can get involved there. But just in your local community, become a poll worker. That's something yes. that I've started to look into. Like my mom's been a poll worker. She's not going to this year because of, you know, COVID-19. And of course, we don't want to put her at risk. But think about getting how you can get involved. Uh, the phone banking, you can do that. And that's, you can do that right in the comfort of your own home. That's super important, which Sylvia also mentioned. So just a couple of, and, and of course, voter registration, which is something which is just ongoing. Yes, that's, that's, that's great because any little help, any little bit helps. That's the point that I think both of us are trying to make. And even like you said, you can get involved in an organization in your sorority in the links, the uh, church, Alpha Kappa Alpha church. Don't underestimate your local PTA. You talk about local politics, what's going on at your school and getting involved in that particular community. That's leadership. And I would love to see more of us moms of color in those particular um, key positions so that we can make a difference in our community. City council, sitting on boards, presiding over clubs. I know Sylvia used to, if um, I'm not mistaken, be over a Girl Scout troop. So she's always had that leadership servant right. um, hood in, in her um, bones. And you did. She's just stepping into doing it on the public servant level, which is amazing. And yeah. I think, and to that, then there's also ways to support whether it's, you know, making sure that, like we talked about, because we already, we don't know what we're going to be up against come November 3rd. So if we need to take turns and watch each other's children, 
while you go vote. That's what we need to do. We don't want to hear about somebody not being able to vote because they didn't have childcare. Yes. Like that's just, that's unacceptable. So let's start organizing now and figuring that out, right? Yes. Um, you know, figuring out how we can go ahead. How can we, if it's safe, can you take your children with you? Because as Sylvia was saying, set the example, sit them down, let them see what that process is like. Like I used to always go with my mom to vote. I used to look forward to it, even though I wasn't the one, you know, way back then, honey, you know, I'm yeah, so right. time when you were, right, right. So, you know, now, right now it's all fancy and things, but it's important for kids to be able to see that process. So it's like, maybe you take them along or maybe you organize so that you figure out like, how can we help support each other so that we can get out there and be active at our, at our polls this November. Yes, that this is inspiring, Shelby. Okay, I know we mentioned that we want to get our mommy friends together, but maybe we can do something. Maybe we can do a podcast about what's going on in California. Maybe yeah. we'll throw it out there just so that we can talk about the different um, ballots and things um, that's going to be on our ballot, but that might encourage other moms to um, do it wherever they're listening. Totally. And then maybe we can even do some research and look at some of the, because in every state, there's usually some sort of hot issue that's out yes. there. So maybe we can also like touch on other states and, and, and just kind of help to get the word out about things. Yes. So ladies, mamas in progress, rock that vote. And rise up. As always, you can find us. You can connect with us. Shelby, you're really good about naming all the handles. I, I mess up. Wait, so. hold up, honey. You're forgetting the mama win, mama rent. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, next week. Next week, you take the reins. I got my drink, okay. honey. I'm ready. What, look, look, because I went last time. It is your turn. So Okay, know. noted, well, I, noted. Look at me. I'm trying to hurry up and rush this along. my mommy juice. <laughs> Yes, your mommy juice. Oh my goodness. Okay, what is my mama win and what is my mama rant? Well, the rant, I, I shouldn't say it's a rant. If you're listening to us, you know that we're both in LA. We have been dealing with the fires, okay? The uh, fires. Hello. I'm not at home, people, just so you yes. know. So you just so, not mine. Yeah, so just so we're clear, if you are listening to this and you're not watching the visuals, Shelby right now is posted up in a nice hotel in Santa Monica because she could not be near her home because of the smoke. The air quality in, in LA has just been atrocious, okay? Let's just start the there. that it's been in 30 years. So if you all, speaking of raising our voices, if you think climate change isn't real, yes. come to LA. Come to California. It's the worst that the air quality has been in 30 years. I forgot how many fires do we have here? 22 fires. Guys, imagine looking out your window like I was and seeing the hillside on fire, flames. Yes. And your house is filled with smoke and toxic toxic fumes but anyway go ahead I'm not gonna steal your moment <laughs> no no that's it I mean just the fact I was just gonna rant about how bad the air condition has been in the air quality it's been awful like I have not been able to do my usual routines in life because there's ash falling from the sky like snow so like you just said if we are not in the polls getting involved in what's going on on a political level when we look up and we see like oh Rome is burning then we have no one really to blame but ourselves. So that's my little rant. I don't know if it was a big rant, but it's just been a lot. The smoke and the fire and the dust and having to readjust has been a lot this week. And I know it hasn't been as much as you because you literally had to get up with your two kitties and go to the other side of town so that you could breathe. <laughs> yeah. And can I tell you, I mean, I'm trying to look at the positives because this past week has really tested who I am as a person. It's been a lot. Like 2020 is not done with us, y'all. So just, just Shelby, listen, I just want to put up a Christmas tree and call it a day. <laughs> let me tell you something. The last seven days of my life have really shown me who I am as a person. Um, and the resilience, but that being said, it hasn't diminished the difficulty of it all. And to your point, so we're in we're in the Foothill communities right near the Bobcat fire. And so, because Cecily, you are, you're about what, like a 20, 30 minute drive from us. And so it's bad there. So imagine how it is for us. Like, so they, and I just, right before we started recording today, they're actually starting to finally evacuate areas. We went ahead and left because on Friday, you know, we were staying inside. We had been on evacuation watch since Tuesday, which was my daughter's birthday, poor thing. Um, and so we've been packed up since Tuesday. And that feeling of just like, you just never know when they're going to start 
saying you got to go, you got to go, you know, like you said, Rome is burning. It was awful. And so by Friday, we were inside and we could still smell it. It was getting stronger and stronger. It's hard. You can't breathe. So for me, I think, so that's when we decided to leave. So we came to the beach to get fresh air. And I'm, I'm grateful that we were able to, you know, it's a sacrifice, but we were able to make it happen because this is, you know, our health um, and, you know, the conditions. So for me, I'm trying to see the positive in it, right? So yeah. it's been an impromptu staycation. And the, I guess the win to not just rant about it is that it's also made me to really appreciate the things we take for granted. We take for granted being able to, to breathe fresh quality yeah. air. I didn't even know what an AQI air quality index was a week oh, ago. Oh, yeah. So, baby, I know what it is now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, I mean, it's the things that we take for granted. I also, on top of it all, lost two people this week. I started the week losing someone very close to me, a very close relative. So, and because of COVID, I could not travel and the fires. I could not travel to be there for the funeral. So it's like dealing with all these different things that are happening that are out of your control, but how it's affecting you, your day to day. So I wasn't able to go and get that closure or just be there with my family during this time of grief. Yeah. And then to end the week, I ended up, I lost a friend, someone who is our age. So that also, so it was just like, bam, bam, bam. But so with that, I building on that, just celebrating the, things we take for granted, I really think we have to, as much as we've been through this year, take time to take it to not take for granted our parents, you know, our kids, they, they may get on our nerves, our parents may get on our nerves, but we really can't take them for granted, guys, because you don't know, I wouldn't have thought a year ago, I wouldn't have the opportunity to even get on a plane to say goodbye. Yeah. And, that's the sad reality of what it is. And I have to make peace with that. It's, it, it's as tough as I sit in a hotel, <laughs> but I, I have to, this is just what it is. And so we take these things for granted, even hopping on a flight. We think it's a no, oh, I'll just hop on a flight, no big deal. And this year is really just showing us like, we need to count every blessing. And even with our friends, you know, you know, we love hard and we just have to, like my, my friend who passed, we had all been in a group chat just literally not even 24 hours before, you know, and she was giving her input and, you know, everything, you know, you don't take it, you don't think that's going to be the last interaction you have with someone. Yeah. So I think, and I'm sorry, I'm going on a really long rant. No, 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 this, no, <laughs> keep going, please. So I'm I, here for it. Yeah, so I think we just, and we talk about it all the time, but it is so true. And I think more now than ever that we just have to really count our blessings, not take waking up, being able to see the sunshine for granted. Because once it's taken from you, then you're like, oh, or once you can't stay in your home, then you're like, oh, I was complaining about that house, but now I wish I was able to be at that house, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm just trying to stay positive, push through, and also just be more appreciative, thank God more, and 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 that's all I got, y'all. Hence the mommy juice. <laughs> like, you know why I'm drinking. <laughs> but that was good. No, I mean, whew, that was a lot. Shelby, you had a rough week. That was that's a lot. A lot. It's a that's lot. a lot and under I normal circumstances. But to be under <laughs> this circumstances, it's just a lot. It is a lot. And then the husband, husband is still out of town working hard for the family. So this is definitely for me. And I mean, I'm sure everybody feels, we all have our feelings about 2020, but I will say this year right here, it's taken me to new limits and, but it's showing me who I am and still I rise. I'm still here. And yes. And when you say, friends. When you say mama gets it done, I, for those of you all who are listening, Shelby gets it done. I mean, I know that you still go through what you go through in your private moments. But when I tell you that Shelby is one of the hardest working people that I know on a weekend, honey, we're talking about <laughs> Saturday and Sunday work that's being put in. I just commend you for being able to hold it down. I mean, like hold it all the way down, having all of these things thrust upon you, whether it's in your career, your family, your friends, 
moving, like the way in which you handle it all, I know that God is just shining on you because I don't know the average person that would be able to deal with all the incoming factors that you have. So, and I didn't even know about your, your friends, so I can only ma imagine, but I just want to let you know publicly that you are a mama that holds it down, okay? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you for checking on me, always being there, being a sister, just always, you know, we cannot take for granted what they say. You, you have the family that you were born into and then the family you chose. And, um, and so I just thank you for always being there. And, and it just goes back to what we're saying. You never know what somebody's going through guys. Yeah. And I guess that's what I would end with. It's just like, let's just handle each other with grace. You don't know what people are dealing with. You may scroll on the gram and see that ain't the full picture. So just be kind and, and, and let's be there for one another and show up, even if it's just like, hey, check in on you. Like, let's do yeah. that for each other more. Yes. Amen. And I appreciate you for always doing that for me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So that's our mama win. <laughs> That's a mama win. Mamas get it done and mamas yes. check in on each other. As yes. always, you can find us on, um, you can email us at mamasinprogress at gmail.com. You can watch us on Black Oak TV on YouTube. You can always download us on, if you want to download the podcast on Spotify and Apple. And I thought that was a great one. Yeah, yeah. And everybody, make sure you are ready to vote November 3rd. If you're doing early, whatever you're doing, just raise your voice. Yes, raise your voice. Take care and mama's out.